All right, so let's look at problem number four, a frames and machine problem. A problem that's made up of multiple members and it's not as easy as a trust, right? All these members are not just two-force members, um, although there could be a few two-force members in them. Um, these members have, um, you know, more complicated forces. So, for frames and machines, my first instinct, my first step is to see if I could look at the whole free body diagram. Could I look at the whole free body diagram? I could, um, but there are four unknowns, and actually I, I, actually I could look at the whole free body diagram and solve for two out of those four unknowns, but in general, uh, if there are three unknowns, I like to look at the whole free body diagram and start there, but if there's not three unknowns, then I like to just go ahead and break it apart. Why, why, why am I looking for three unknowns? Because I have three equations. So if the whole free body diagram has three unknowns, I'll start there. But if not, I'll try to maybe look at bar ABC. Does it have three unknowns? Or bar CDE? I try to find a member that has three unknowns because I have three equations for each member. Um, but man, it looks like member ABC is going to have four unknowns. Member CDE is going to have four unknowns. The whole free body diagram is going to have four unknowns. So, you know, I, there, there, there may not be an, an easy way around it. We might just have to draw the free body diagram for one and draw the free body diagram for the other. Um, and both of them has four unknowns, but there's, there's an overlap. You see that? So also, uh, the way that I do these problems, I kind of give you a hint of, of what I think you should do. And I'm going to ask for your free body diagram, so I'm going to grade your free body diagram. Uh, so I actually tell you to draw a free body diagram of member A, B, C. So, so let's let's start there. Uh, so here is member A, B, C. I didn't really draw it to scale here, but uh, there's a pin at A, so I've got A, Y, and A, X. Uh, do you see that that rope is pulling the, the tension right there? That is still 210 Two ten pounds, right there, because the rope is the same throughout the whole uh, cable. Sorry, the tension is the same throughout the whole cable. Um, tension is always pulling, uh, and then here C X C X and C Y, right there. Now, if I ask for the free body diagram, I'm going to grade your grade your free body diagram. So you need to make it self sufficient. I like to make it. Self-sufficient. Draw all the dimensions, all the angles, three feet, so that when we're summing the forces and summing the moments, I don't have to go back to the original drawing. Draw your axes. Don't forget your axes. All right. So that right there has, um, that free body diagram has four unknowns. But no matter what I do, any of my free body diagrams have four unknowns. Let me go ahead and start right here. So the more you do these problems, the more you'll be comfortable with doing some things out of order. I'm going to do a few things out of order that, than I normally would. Okay, so let me draw a free body diagram for C, D, E. E, I'll draw this E, X, and E, Y. Uh, D, all right, so at D, I like to keep this pulley attached, uh, and the tension is the same throughout the pulley. It is 210. It is always pulling, but you see that it's pulling on this side as well as this side, right? Remember we've done these pulleys. They're, they're pulling on both, um, both sides, 210. All right, now here, there's a pin at C, so I've got CX and CY. Since I've already drawn CX and CY, let me draw these equal and opposite from the way that I have drawn them before. I've already, I've drawn, this one feels that CX and CY to that direction. This other one feels CX and CY to this direction. Or at least that's what I'm going to guess. Um, you've got to be consistent with what you guess. My answer might come out negative, which means I guess the wrong direction. All right, and let's, let's draw these dimensions, let's draw these axes, make it self-sufficient. Uh, this is nine feet, and let's be careful, it's nine feet to the middle of that pulley knot. So that 210 is not at nine feet. Uh, and actually the diameter, look, I underlined that. Diameter of the pulley is 1.5, so this is 0 0.75, 0 0.75. Maybe I'll draw that, 0 0.75 right there. Um, this is nine feet from E to the middle of that pulley. 
Now here, this three feet, let's look carefully, is the distance from C, not to the middle of the pulley, but to, to actually to where the rope is pulling. I didn't draw this good, but it's three feet from there to there. It is six feet from here to here. Okay, I think that is self-sufficient enough. All right, and so what happens is I've got a free body diagram for bar A, B, C, and I've got three equations. I've got a free body diagram for bar C, D, E, and I have three equations. Each of them has have four unknowns, but together they only have six unknowns. Six equations, six unknowns. Six equations, six unknowns. You should be able to solve for it. Now, let's think ahead at... Is there any equation that will only have one unknown? I don't think so. I don't think so. But do you see that if I look at bar A, B, C, and if I sum the moments about A, then it's going to have two unknowns, right? Cx and Cy. And if I look at free body diagram for C, D, E, and I sum the moments about E, it's also going to have the same two unknowns, CX and CY. That has happened before, right? We've done problems kind of like this where uh, because they share CX and CY, summing the moments of this one, summing the moments of this one gives us... So yes, we have six equations, six unknowns, but we can start there with two equations, two unknowns. All right, but anyway, so free body diagram for bar ABC, summing the moments about A. AX goes straight through it, AY goes straight through it. This 210 is acting six feet away, creating a negative moment. The CY is acting three feet away, right? CY is acting three feet away, creating a positive moment, the way that I drew it. And CX is acting nine feet away, creating a negative, right? Because um, just stay, just choose a direction to be positive and stay consistent. I always like to choose counterclockwise positive. Uh, so this would be negative CX times 9. Set that equal to 0. Uh, and then some of the moments about E down here. EX goes straight through it. EY goes straight through it. This 210 is not acting the full 9, but 8.25 feet away creating a positive moment. This 210 is acting 6 away, also positive. Uh, CX is acting 9 away, creating a positive. And CY is acting 18 feet away, creating a positive. All right. So I, I, I probably chose the wrong direction somewhere here. But this is two equations, two unknowns. I'll do a little bit of math here for you. Let's see. 3CY minus 1260 equals 9CX. So maybe divide this through by... Oh, actually. So here's a little bit of a shortcut here. I already have 9CX right here. Uh, so uh, usually I would go through this and, and divide through by 9 and say CX is equal to one-third CY minus something and plug that in right there. But look for a, uh, sometimes 45 degree angles will do the same thing with you here. Uh, but because I already had 9CX, I can just plug in, let's see, 3CY right here for this whole term. All right, this is just math. This is just math. And I would get, what do I get here? I would get CY negative 82.5. What does that mean and what do I want you to do? That negative mean, doesn't mean left or right. That negative means you chose the wrong direction. I drew it the wrong direction. So I want you to, for this problem, make it positive and go back here and redraw it anywhere that you had drawn it. So this is actually up here and this is actually down here. You might have guessed that way to begin with. If you had guessed correctly to begin with, then your answer would have come out to be negative. Your answer would have come out to positive 82.5. But I, I guessed the wrong way to begin with. Um, and so my answer came out negative. So go back. So box in the positive and go back and change the sign for that. And then, all right, but now I'm going to go back, plug this back in right here, plug in negative into an equation that I've already written right there. 
and I would get CY, sorry, that I would get CX is negative, man, it just chose wrong, it's okay to choose wrong, negative 6, um, negative 167.5, so CX is 167.5 pounds, right, gotta have units, box that in, and make sure it's going the correct direction, that one feels it that way, that one feels it that way. All right, so that's what I'm looking for. These these things, these positive magnitudes boxed in, and then go back to the free body diagram and see that it's drawn the correct direction. Now, since I went backwards to an equation that I'd already written, I plugged in that negative 82.5. If, if I'm ever going backwards into an equation I've already written, I'd plug in the negative 167.5. But now moving forward, I, I know the directions. I know the correct directions. And so now I think I'm ready to use my other equations my other equations would be for bar ABC, I can sum the forces in X and sum the forces in Y. I haven't used those equations yet. And then I can do the same thing for bar CDE. I can sum the forces in X and sum the forces in Y. So um, hopefully you're looking along uh, with this free body diagram in this figure. Um, now uh, summing the forces in X, I've got AX... I've got 210, and now I know this is 167.5, and I know it is that way, so it is to the left, 167.5, all right? Set that equal to zero, I would get AX negative, goodness, 42.5, so AX is 42.5 pounds, box the positive in, and go back and redraw, draw it the correct direction. And then summing the forces in Y, I had AY, and the CY was 82.5, and it was down, right? The correct direction was down. So down 82.5 equals zero. So AY came out to be positive 82. Point five. If it comes out to be positive, then just box it in. You don't. You can leave it, right? You can um, leave it the way that it was drawn. All right. And now for bar t -t 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 C D E, I can sum the forces in X and sum the forces in Y for bar C D E. If we go back to that, uh, we had the negative two ten going down from the rope. Uh, e X. I drew it up. And then, uh, let's see, C, Y, and so, sorry, C, X, we're in the X direction, is 167.5, and it is correctly that way. So plus 167.5 equals zero. So I've got E, X is positive 42.5 pounds. And some of the forces in Y, I've got negative 210 because it's, going down, yeah, or this, now this is in the y direction, the other one's in the x direction, so 210 going down, um, cy was 82.5 going up on this one, and plus ey equals zero, ey is 127.5, so there we go, box those in, you need units on your answers, you need the positive values boxed in, and then I'm going back to your free body diagram to see that they are drawn the correct direction. And one of the main things, one of the big things, is for something like this pin uh, C here, uh, this one needs to be opposite direction as that one. The CY on that one needs to be the opposite direction the CY on that one. Okay? So there we go. That's your frames and machines uh, example.